Hey guys, this is Eric Weingunner with Weingunner Racing. Today's video is a, I made a mistake and I, I don't know how it happened or even how to fix it, but I'm gonna talk about what that mistake is and we'll go from there. But before I do that, I wanna talk about this. PRI is coming up in a few weeks. For those that aren't familiar with PRI, PRI stands for Performance Racing Industry. It's a trade show for just race car stuff. It's probably one of the coolest things you'll experience if you're a car person. Um, any really because everything every vendor that sells car parts is there and you get to see him talk to the people it's the best way to to get to know the parts really period anyway it's happening in indianapolis indiana and it's on it goes from the 12th through the 14th but the date i'm talking about is the 13th so on friday the 13th in room 204 we have a room reserved at 11 o'clock a.m we got reserved till one so but what happens is any of the cam challenge competitors several of them are going to be in that room and they're going to take your questions and share what they've learned and talk about the cam challenge itself but this is probably one of the best opportunities you have to actually get to talk to people that might know the answers you ha want to know about your camshafts so i'll be there to kind of host the thing and if you want to ask me questions feel free to or curse me out whatever and works best for you it's fine with me uh, but anyway that's taking place then um, another note um, if you haven't already pre-ordered that LS book, please do, because I just sent it to the printer today and that one will be, I just finished yeah, last night before I sent it. It's 158 pages. Only three of those pages are not related to dyno charts. So there it's 150 pages of dyno charts and graphs of things that were tested during the LS from 2024. So from the beginning to the end, six sets of heads, 20, no, 33 camshafts, three different sets of headers, three or four different intake manifolds, several different carburetors and different configurations. That's all in that book. I'll put a link in the description. It is expensive, but it'd be a great Christmas gift. Um, I have only got, I only bought 10 more than what's reserved. So you need to go in and buy the book for presale because I'm probably going to have them next week well, or the week after because next week's Thanksgiving. Do that. All right, to my mistake. And wait, one more thing. I just thought of it because I don't want to forget. I would like to know if you guys want to see a live um, feed of an, an, an engine getting dynoed on Tuesday. Because this coming up Tuesday, I'm going to be back at Dunsworth Machine, and we're dynoing my root supercharged big block Chevy finally. And this is going to be cool. It's already on the dyno, and I'll show you a picture here in a second. This is the motor. So this started its life as the engine that I used for the 2014 Engine Master Challenge, the 477. A lot of the parts got reused, some didn't. So what stayed the same was the block, although I did bore it 30 over. It didn't need to be, but I just did it anyway. The crank remained, and that's a Cali's crank. It's a Dragon Slayer. They don't even sell that crankshaft anymore. It's a 375 stroke, but it does have a small block Chevy rod journal. The rods are a Molliner rod. They're about the only ones that make it for this. So the Molliner rods have the big block end on the rod, but small block Chevy diameter. The pistons come from Race Tech. They're a custom one, a nice dome on them. They got a whole bunch, pretty much the, every feature you need. Heavy wrist pins, gas ported, 043 millimeter, 043, 043, three millimeter ring pack. The compression ratio is like 11 and a half to one. The heads are some AFR 305 heads. They're the same ones. I didn't do any additional pull work from what I used whenever they were 477. Uh, I used the Engine Masters. I did drain some, or drill some drain holes to go into this expensive, nice Moroso pan. And um, this cam, cam is a saw roller from Urson. It's got 850 lift, and I can't remember the duration. It was like 274, 289, something like that. On like a 112 or something. Um, I'll show the cam card sometime, but the supercharger is a 1071 high helix from the blower shop. And up top, we got 2000 CFM Mark Whitener alcohol or methanol carburetors. So you might say, why didn't you do injection? Because I can't afford it. And also, it's real easy for me to switch these back to gas when I'm just trying to move the Camaro around, do sort of things like that, just to switch it to the methanol carburetors. But that is the engine that will be dynoed. But that's going to be cool. But I don't know if you guys want to see a live feed because I did the last one and I realized it sucked. And you know why it sucked? Because I can't work on the engine while talking to a camera that's in the other room watching the dyno screen. 
Um, but if you'd like to just see it, put it in the comments and I'll do it. If enough people will say yes, then I'll do it. Otherwise, I'll just make it a video for later, which I probably will anyway. But anyway, that's happening on Tuesday, and I look forward to sharing that with you guys because that, to me, I am super, super excited for that because you got a big block and you got a root supercharger. It should make well over a 1,000. My goal is on the lowest horsepower level, the lowest pulley that we have, it will make more than what the engine in the Camaro does now, which is 1,060. So I'd like to see it make that with the lowest boost level. And then, of course, way more than that above that. I really don't want it to go over 1,400 because it's going to be hard on Gary's Dino. If it does, great. Um, but anyway, that'll be a Tuesday. If you want to see a live feed, let me know. Like I said, it'll probably be boring because I can't talk to the camera while working on an engine. I'm not that guy. So I need more crew members, I guess. But anyway, now to the mistake. So a little backstory. In a couple videos ago, I'd show the cam from Joe Carroll and the cam from the Urson cam, which was the one that I had Urson regrind for me. The specs were very, very, very close. If you look at the cam cards, we're only one degree of duration difference and about 20 thousandths extra lift with Joe Carroll's. The difference in power was like 30. It was huge, right? Um, I had taken Joe Carroll's camshaft to go get a cam doctor. And the guy cam doctored NK performances to make sure he was legal. But then he showed me how to do it. And so I, first time ever using a cam doctor, did his. And then I did GPIs. And then I did Brian Tooley's. And I thought, well, GP, I thought Joe Carroll's must be out to lunch because it wasn't even the same as what I was getting on the cam doctor. GPIs was within a degree of what their cam card said. So I was like... Can't be me. And it was doing it on multiple lobes. On Job's, it wouldn't. So, anyway, I was like, well, it means the cam doctor's reading right. And if one of them read right and the other one didn't. So, anyway, last week I was on Dino with um, testing more of the LS stuff that's in that book that I mentioned. Because one of the things I wanted to find out from the test was, does an engine with better heads, does the camshaft make more power? Now, I know you're thinking, well, there's plenty of tests out there to do it. Yes, but it's so hard to judge that because a lot of those tests you see, but especially the ones by magazines or people that used to be magazine writers, they're getting paid to promote a product. I got paid jack shit. So I actually want to know the real answer. So I had the Urson Cam and um, Joe Carroll's in it again because it already tested with the Pro Max large bore heads. This time it was pet tested with the AFR LS3 Mongoose CNC ported heads, a way better head, period. Um, just to see if those differences would have changed. So anyway, of course, Joe Carroll's did well again. Now, I haven't had a chance to go back and look at all the data, and when I do, I'll put it in its own video, but I know it was a, a, a gain. My thinking was it might have been only the same gain as what it had before with the Pro Max from rough memory. I will do a whole video on that, but that's not my mistake. The mistake I made was the whole cam doctor because it didn't make sense that it would do that. So Daniel Powell was nice enough, and he's like, hey, send me in any camshafts from the challenge, if those guys want to do it, I'll send them in. So I called Joe and I was like, hey, Joe, is there right if I send my camshaft to uh, your camshaft to Daniel Powell to get a cam doctor? Because maybe I'm an idiot about this thing. And he said, absolutely. So Daniel Powell sent it off. Uh, sorry, I sent it off to Daniel Powell and he contacted me yesterday and he gave me the whole rundown. And it, I was wrong. Whatever I was doing wrong on the cam doctor, or if it was the cam doctor itself mis malfunctioning, which I don't know how because it would keep repeating. I just don't, I don't know why it did what it is. So I'm not a camshaft pro expert. I don't know why I did it. But Daniel Powell did it and it was with in one degree. So it was, in other words, everybody was like in the bash comp and I was kind of too. I was like, man, this isn't as close as what it should have been. When Daniel Powell put it on his, which is a much better cam doctor, it actually spins it mechanically instead of you manually having to do it. It was within like one degree of what the cam card said. And not only that, it was within one degree on all 16 lobes. I was not getting that. It was close on the first intake, not on the second. So I need to apologize to comp and whoever watched that because I don't know what I did wrong, but I know I have a strong feeling that something went wrong there. And so I apologize to comp and all those people doing that. I still think the video is valid because you still had two cam cards now for sure both of them have been on the cam doctor. Both are within one degree. One makes from one degree more intake duration and 20,000 more lift. Joe's Carroll still up 30 horsepower. So if you saw two camshaft cards that were identical or close to it, you'd be like, oh, they'll make about the same power. Wrong. That was proven. 
So that does have some validity there. But I am apologizing because it it's for whatever reason, the cam doctor will read right on the first lobe or close to it, not on the second. I have no idea why it read GPIs correctly. I did send GPIs to Daniel Powell and he's going to do that too. I asked GPIs permission first. Um, I asked other competitors too, but they didn't want to do it, which is fine. Um, and you might say, why did you even do that? Well, here's another story. And this is the reason why I think I messed up. There is this engine, a 406 small block Chevy, or actually a 421 small block Chevy that I had done the heads for, cam, and take for this customer. And I told him, if you don't make 730, you need to call me. It didn't make 730, it made like 680. It was way off the mark, right? So I said, man, there's something wrong, man. Bring it down to our dyno, let's see. He brings it down to the dyno at Dunsworth, and uh, yeah, it made 680 on the first pull. I work on it all day, get it up to like 707. I don't know why it's doing what it's doing, and it's peaking way, way late. It was peaking at, I shouldn't even say it was peaking. We stopped the pull at 7,700 RPMs. It was still making power there. Um, and climbing, which didn't make any sense for the camshaft to put in. So anyway, flash forward, he burns a hole through a piston and Dunsworth redoing the engine. And he wants me to redo the heads, obviously, in that. But he said, take the cam, go get it cam doctored. So I did. I'm going to show you that's cam card here in a second. Because this is what said, man, I, the cam doctor's got to be wrong. None of the lobes were correct. None of the lobes matched the cam card at all. None of them even matched themselves at all. It was horrible. I could tell you visually, I could see chatter on the camshaft. That's visually, I absolutely could see it. And this is a comp one too. So I was like, maybe this has got to be the reason why they ain't making power. So I sent it out to the cam group that had all the cam competitors and like, something's wrong, man. And I'm talking about the cam. It's got to be the cam doctor. So Brian Tooley, he's like, hey, send it to me. I'll pay for shipping and everything. We'll check that out. So let's go on to Brian Tooley's and we'll see about that. I'm almost hoping that it's... Um, Still wrong because then it explained why the engine didn't make power. But I don't think it is. I think it's maybe off, but not that far off. We're talking like it had one, you'll see in a second. With the, I'll show the whole cam doctor. You got to look at it real close. But you had an intake lobes at 271. You had another one at 275. You had the lowest one was 261. Didn't make any sense. I don't even know how you do that. But anyway, so my point I'm trying to make though is I don't know how I messed up the cam doctor on that. I don't have a clue. But, and how GPIs could be so correct, matching its card, and the others aren't. I don't know. And I guess it's only a third time to ever use it. But I do plan to go to PRI, obviously, because I'm going to be at that deal. But Performance Trends, who makes that cam doctor, will be there so I can ask them. Now, granted, it's not even my own cam doctor. I'm using the machine shop here, Lucido Machine Shop, to use their cam doctor. Because I don't got one. And you don't say, why don't you buy one? I got a quote. It's $3,400. That's right, $3,400 to check a cam. This isn't even one that automatically turns. You have to turn it yourself. That's that's expensive. You know, I, I can't sell enough cams to even justify that, to be honest with you. So, anyway, that's pretty much my video today. But I'm going to show you the cam cards and stuff, but I wanted to get that out of the way. I've got to leave to go to a swim tournament for my son. So, Here's some more stuff. I'll show you the cam cards and the engine you get to see here. I'll we'll do some voiceovers for those. But um, anyway, let me show you the engine and then the cam card that you can see what I'm talking about. Here's the cam card or cam doctor for this cam. By the way, the actual specs are supposed to be like 268, 280, 112 lobe separation. You can see all the cylinders there. They don't match. Like none of them. And... It's so far off, I can't, I'm, it's got to be me. It cannot be a cam. I don't know how they ground it that way. But, uh, yeah, this is what got me confused. In a way, I'm hoping it's something like this, but I have a feeling it's not. But that's just off. I just don't know why some of them read absolutely correct and some don't. So, But I'm going to get to the bottom of it one way or another, or I'm going to send it off to have it done properly. Even though this machine, like I said, is like $3,500, I wouldn't think that you could mess it up, so, but I guess it is, but we'll see when Brian Tooley tells me that one. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Remember, I do not port cast iron heads. You can get mad at me all you want. I still won't port cast iron heads. I am no Superman. You guys take care.